Well, hello. It is 15, so I'm going to get started. Set my reminders so I don't talk too much. Uh, let's see, so this talk is uh, about accessibility, um, but it's probably not like most accessibility talks you would come across uh, you know, here at most Drupal events or you know, here at Gov Con. Um, it's basically a, a more holistic approach to dealing with accessibility in your organization. So a little bit about me. My name is Dan Moyer, um, and I've been doing web development since 1998. I was like a summer intern at college doing the physics department website. Uh, I've been doing accessibility since around 2004, I believe. I've um, been doing Drupal since about 2008, uh, when Drupal 6 first came out. Um, you can the easiest way to contact me is uh, you can see my email up there, dmoyard at form one .com. Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you can pretty much find me at DC Moyard everywhere online. That's like my channel at GitHub uh, slash Drupal.org. Um, the only real place I really post, and even there it's not that often, is on Mastodon. And that's my Mastodon, DC Moyard at Fostodon, in case you're interested. Um, I've worked with a, quite a few large, mostly large enterprise sites, um, like the EPA.gov. The entire website, uh, USDA, uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, uh, which the you most know, recent one was uh, NRDC, uh, the Natural Resources Defense Council. Uh, so, a lot of experience with large organizations, large websites, uh, where there is a lot of emphasis on accessibility and how to you know, make sure the website is accessible uh, to everybody. Um, so, a little bit about who I work for. I work at Form 1. Um, I've worked there since about 2011, and um, I love working there because they really focus on like, you know, making an impact in the world to whoever we work with. Um, so there's a lot of PR marketing there, um, but just basically for me, I like working there because I like helping people and spreading good organizations, like how they want to improve them. So in this talk, I'm going to basically talk about four things. Uh, first, I'm going to tell a story or two. Um, hopefully some of those stories will resonate with you. Um, if not, it might be a good thing. Um, if just to kind of get lay, lay some groundwork of what are some common things people run into uh, and how to sort of address those issues. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about integrating accessibility. Um, then we're going to be talking about your organization, not just your website. Um, and then I'll be digging into, you know, now that you get the general idea of how to integrate accessibility in your organization, um, how do you organize, you know, that practice? How do you get people to work together? What, what, what's the worst way to put people together? Combine resources in order to get that stuff done. Um, and the last little bit I'm going to do is kind of the thing that people often request is, okay, I have all the accessibility knowledge, I know it's important, but, you know, how do I get my boss to understand, you know, how can I convince them? How can I convince, you know, all the, you know, the head of the department? How can I convince the CEO that this is important for me to address it? Uh, so getting started for a story. Um, so you're at Drupal.com, you know, you're learning a lot about accessibility. You know, you get excited, you know, or you read blog posts, you're like, oh, this is new. Um, you know, and you get really excited, oh yeah. You know, alt text. Okay, yeah, we want people who can do that, you know, and so you start feeling, yeah, I got this. I know what I'm doing, I can collect implement some of this stuff. Um, so you get really excited, you start diving in and then that, after a while, you get a little stressed, and you're just like, okay, maybe there's more to accessibility stuff than I thought. And you have to go back, and you start doing some more learning, because it's kind of a continuous learning thing, you know, and then you get back to the, yes, I know what I'm doing now. Okay, I got a bold bonus picture, I've got a bold that I want to do. Um, and so you start to implement those things. Um, then you kind of get stressed, because a lot of people you work with, you know, are just like, they don't know really what's going on, you know, and how do I make it, Clear you know, how important this is and how we're going to do things, and sometimes you're just kind of running around trying to tap everything by yourself. You know, and then finally you just you get burnt out. You know, and the reason is because you're trying to tap it all on your own because you know how important accessibility is. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to kind of drag people with you and say, hey, this is really important. How do we deal with it? 
Um, and so one of the things I want to talk about is for this next part is integrating accessibility. Um, and these are things you can do for your organization uh, to prevent you from burning out, you know? There'll still be periods when you're like very confident you know what you're doing. There's still be periods where you're kind of stressed um, and maybe a little overworked, but you never want to get to a point where you're burnt out. And so what do I mean when I say integrating accessibility? Um, so, you know, we're here at Drupal DevCon, so, you know, the focus is naturally on Drupal and websites. Um, and there's a whole lot of information on making websites accessible. Um, you can even, make, you know, expand that a little bit and make digital accessibility and we're going to talk more about, uh, you know, like apps. You know, making PDFs accessible. Um, but what I'm talking about is not just the, you know, the, the website or one or two things that you're working on, but your entire organization. You take that idea of accessibility and you want to address that in every part of your organization, everything that you're, you work as a team. Um, and it's not just things you build, it's how you treat people, how you train people. It's also about how you deal with the processes at work. Um, and you want to think about accessibility through all these things. Um, and that can really lay the groundwork for dealing with uh, having a more meaningful impact on whatever you do. You know, what things you build, services, stuff like that, that are accessible to everybody. So the very first thing you want to do, um, um, and it should be the easiest, and that is you want to have an accessibility statement. Um, and there are a lot of good resources online if you just look, okay, I want to create an accessibility statement. You know, and there's a lot of things you can tell up what you're geared towards, what you're interested in. Um, there's even, I think, the Web Accessibility Institute has like a, a wizard that you could, you know, say, hey, generate it for me. Um, you know, some accessibility statements are they're more like PR. You know, you put it on your website, say, hey, we care about accessibility. Uh, sometimes you can go into more detail, say, hey, this is how you can use our website better. You know, this is how you can access our information elsewhere, that kind of stuff. Um, but putting it into like your long-term strategy of your organization really makes it a key part, it's, it's a key driver to how the organization runs. And you want accessibility to be, not necessarily at the forefront, but always in the picture and you're always thinking about it. You know, it doesn't have to be, it's not always gonna be the main um, thing you, you worry about, and it shouldn't be, but it should be something you think about on every new thing that you're you're looking at. So the two main things um, to think through when integrating the into the organization um, are people and processes. Um, and so for people, you really want to have a, a very diverse and inclusive group of people that are working there. Um, there have been countless studies, I think like over a dozen over the past 20 or 30 years to say just how much more effective teams are when they come from different backgrounds. You know, they can handle stuff better, they have a broader wealth of information and background that they can kind of put together, um, they're more innovative, and so you really want to focus on making sure you develop a community, you know, with all the, the, your colleagues and coworkers that is inclusive you know, regardless of what their background is, and making them feel included so that they do feel comfortable speaking up whenever they have something they want to bring up. Um, and that is, uh, you know, so there's a lot of overlap here with like the, you know, the diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, you know, but this, this is a little bit from the lens of, you know, people who are disabled, you know, or people who have um, you know, even temporary disabilities. Um, so it, it can just vary, it's just like an additional one you can take out through there. And so when you have these people, is you also want to train them on accessibility. Now I don't, I'm not sure I rec recommend you know, yelling at them, but you know your organization better than I do. Um, it does work for some people. Um, but you want to give them a lot of resources um, and you want to build in processes that where they can learn about accessibility. Um, and it is something that everybody in the organization should learn. You know, you can have, they don't have to all take the same training, you know, but like the upper management and CEO, they need to have at least some basic understanding of accessibility. You know, the people who are 
managing pro projects need to have, you know, know about accessibility. You know, the, the developers who are working on things, you know, the designers who design things, like people putting things together. Um, so you can tailor the training to what they have to work on. Um, the other part is processes, you know, and so for most organizations, you're usually building something, you know, uh, like a product or a service. Um, and you want to make sure that you're building whatever it is you're doing, whether it is a website, you know, or an app, you know, or a quarterly report that you release to the public. Um, you want to make sure that whatever you're building is accessible to a wide variety of people. Um, and so it is very important that you have thought about accessibility through the entire process of building it. You don't just want to wait until you've built all the cars and they're on the, the lot to finally decide, oh, it's broken, we need to fix something. You know, so like whatever you hear about like the product recall, they have to bring back, that is extremely expensive. Um, the same thing for accessibility. If you launch a website and then you test it for accessibility, and there's all these issues, it is a lot more expensive dealing with that. So you want to make sure you do it throughout the entire process. You know, Whenever you're building each individual component of your final product, you're going to be thinking about accessibility and testing for accessibility and checking to make sure everything kind of works together. You, know, you want to do it through the entire thing, even in the design phase um, or the brainstorming phase. You know, um, If you're wireframing a new widget, you, know, you want to make sure you're thinking about, okay, what, let's think through this. Like, what would be happen if um, you could only use a keyboard? You know, just think through all of the different ways that accessibility can affect the product. So you want to think of it through the entire uh, product lifestyle. Um, and it's not just product, it is also everything else you might want to do. Um, another big area to think about is documentation. You know, you do have all this training for people, um, but you want to sort of build this library of resources that people in your organization can use. Um, and you can reference, you know, to say, hey, when people are, you know, they're writing a grant, you know, or they're writing an RFP or submitting a proposal, hey, here's some stuff we've thought about in the past about accessibility. You know, here's a good place to do it, you know, uh, like learning management system, uh, you know, like something like Confluence, we can kind of, you know, like a, a centralized location where we can put stuff. Um, and it's really important to have very good documentation on the entire process of your organization. Um, so this is not a mistake. Um, this is actually uh, for Form 1. This is like one of the slides that is in, like when you create slide decks. Um, and it, it, it's wonderful. It has all kinds of information. Um, because they put in a lot of thought into, okay, we want to make sure that the slides and stuff match our brand. We have these cool ideas we want to go through. We have these colors. Um, we've done a lot of work on, you know, like on what font we choose and weights and stuff that it's easy to understand. We, we thought a lot about color contrast and in different situations, we use you know, different colors and stuff. Um, and you want to be that kind of thorough. Um, in your internal documentation. Now, not necessarily stuff you give to the public, but even internally so that, you know, this is geared towards your individual organization of what makes things better. Okay. Uh, you also want to give people in your organization places where they can communicate, you know, whether that is uh, physical or virtual. Um, one of my first job when I moved to the UCA area that I worked at NIH um, and we had like these afternoon tea every day at like two o'clock for half an hour. Um, it definitely felt very academic like oh this is different um, but it, it was also really tons of great conversations that really led people to like think deeper about you know whatever they were talking about. Um, and so things like Slack and you know, we have online stuff and virtual. I'm going to give people ways that they can kind of communicate, kind of ad hoc. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that you enforce. Um, another big part of a process in your organization that you don't normally think about accessibility is shopping. You know, when you're doing procurement. You know, when you want to find a vendor to build your website for app. When you want to find, okay, well, we need to have a ticketing system. We want to make sure that software, whatever software we buy that our users are going to use is accessible. You know, so it's really helpful to sort of make sure whenever you're doing those contracts and buying services, um, you want to make sure that whatever you're buying is accessible to everybody that works you know, at your organization. 
Um, and sometimes that does involve not necessarily trusting what the vendor is saying. It's very helpful to have like an accessibility expert um, on hand um, to kind of vet some of these vendors for you and say, hey, they know what they're doing. Um, you know, they don't always just trust what they say. Look at their previous projects and you know, see if they are accessible. Um, and if they see what can do, you can do to sort of like make sure whatever you buy and bring in is accessible, not just stuff that you make. So they can make, help make things that you make more accessible. Okay, um, another part is like your physical location. So I, I love this picture. Um, it's really funny because it's not really an accessible ramp. Um, I, think, I think somebody put the, uh, the accessible sign there as a joke. I think it's like some, uh, I think it's in Alaska, some fishing town, and they, I don't know, they throw fish down it or I, I don't know what they're doing. Um, but it's very funny that you want to make sure that your physical spaces are accessible as well. Um, and there's a lot of research of just doing things that you might at first think is only for people with real, in wheelchairs, you know, only for those that are hard of hearing, um, would actually affect a lot of people and it can make their lives easier as well. Okay, so next, how we've gone through like how integrating accessibility, let's talk about how do you organize your organization? That's a math word. Math for organize your organization. Of how to, like, your accessibility practice. Like, how do you organize it? And there are a variety of different ways, um, and some of them you kind of miss them out together. Uh, sometimes there's sort of like a way to kind of go through them. Uh, but basically the whole idea is you want to establish a governance model um, for tackling accessibility at your organization, you know? And it's very key that when you do set up this structure, you also give enough resources to succeed. And so here are a bunch of different ways that you can approach um, like handling accessibility. Um, so one of the easiest things to do is just hire a consultant, you know, or um, that acts as like a coach to help guide you through the process. Um, you can also have like a, a coach to kind of help your team gradually learn about accessibility. So it's not just everybody learning on their own. You have that kind of a guide that, that you know, takes you through, okay, here's a good resource of how to learn X and how to learn Y. Um, the next one is to have like a full-time accessibility lead. Um, this is also very helpful um, on smaller teams. Um, you know, because on a really large team, they might get overwhelmed very easily. Um, but having you know some person whose only job is accessibility, and they can do, they can kind of take the role of that you know accessibility coach. Um, but they also have maybe more power to like, you know, manage the documentation around accessibility and stuff like that. So it can be very helpful to have somebody whose job it is. To handle it rather than you know just being some volunteers um, which leads me to the next one which is a network of advocates um, this is just definitely how we started at forum one this is probably our practice maybe five six years ago kind of developed it and a network of advocates is basically kind of like the grassroots approach to organizing we're sort of self-organizing you have a bunch of different people um, that are interested in accessibility they're excited about it they kind of implement it you know, they're like, oh, there's other people in the organization that are, and you kind of get together and you, you chat um, in whatever projects you're working on, whatever service you're building, um, you're thinking about accessibility, you're kind of like spreading the good word about accessibility. Um, and this can really scale up, um, you know, as the organization grows and you try to get more people involved, more people excited, um, to try to really think this through. Um, another one is a centralized group of experts. So this is kind of like the, the full-time assessment lead, but instead of a single person, it's like a department. You know, and if that department job, assessment lead, they, you know, they're like, um, they're like the teachers that go out to everything else in the organization to try to, you know, teach what are the good things about accessibility, why it's important, you know, what's the best way to 
test for it, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, one potential downside of this approach is that they often get siloed. Um, and so they might feel separate from the rest of the organization. Um, so you want to make sure that, um, like if you have different departments and there's a lot of collaboration between them, you want to make sure that this department collaborates well as well, you know, so that they are involved in all the meetings that they need to. So they don't just feel like they come in at the last minute and yell at somebody for not using all tech and then they, you know, they want to be part of the organization. So all of the ones that I've, I've gone through so far, and I do want to give you a word, word, word of caution, is that if, if those don't get enough resources, whoever is part of that team can get burnt out. You know, and my favorite quote about this is that they feel like they're a firefighting squad in a building of just casual arsonists. You know, they just want to... <laughs> They don't really know about the dangers of fire, and they're just like, oh, it's okay to do that. And then so everybody's just running around, um, you know, trying to put out all the fires. And so you want to make sure that you give enough resources to whatever structure you're using to manage accessibility. Uh, the next one is integrated teams. So this one takes like a, like a network of advocates approach and takes it a step further. And so when you have different teams that are supposed to focus on something. You know, like maybe you have a, a team that focuses on building that section of the website. You have a team that's focused on, okay, we need to put out these quarterly reports and PDF. Um, and you have someone in each of those teams who's responsible for accessibility. You know, just like you might have a project manager and a developer and a designer. You have someone who's in charge of QA. You have somebody in charge of accessibility as well. So this gives it um, and again, you kind of mix and match these things, so you can have like a centralized group of experts, but you can take the integrated teams approach so that you know they're on different different teams, and that can kind of help that collaboration and cross-functional awareness. Uh, and then the, the, the last one is kind of a somewhat of like a the ideal, I would think. Um, this is the one where form one where in the beginning stages of, um, this is where you, what you want to develop you know, what's called a community of practice, where you develop an actual community. Um, so it's kind of like the network of advocates, but it has like official responsibility, you know? And instead of it just being a specific group of people that's in a team, you know, there's a specific place. Right? Everybody's welcome to that place. Everybody's welcome to contribute their knowledge to that place. Um, but there's a lot of uh, cool things written rather recently, like five, last five years or so, on community practice. And there's different ones for different things. Um, and you can definitely set one up for accessibility. <clears throat> okay, so whatever approach you do, you do want to make sure that you do it um, kind of like in baby steps um, and take incremental approaches. Um, you don't really just want to like necessarily dive in you know, head first um, and realize, oh, I don't have the resources for this. I don't have the time for this. Um, so you just want to make sure that you do take incremental steps. Um, and even though you take incremental steps, you want to be ambitious and modest. You know, so you want to be ambitious that, hey, we have lofty goals. These are worthy goals. We want to try to achieve them. But you want to be modest and say, okay, this is what you want to achieve, but you want to be realistic. And what's the realistic approach to achieve that goal? <clears throat> okay, so the last little bit, uh, how to convince your boss. Um, I think I really had this as how to you know, like sway the CEO or whatever, but on the, the GovCon website, they had like a section on how to convince your boss that you can come here. So I'm like, oh, I can use that as well. So basically, you want to develop a strong business case. Um, and just prove to the people to say, hey, how important accessibility is. <clears throat> you know, and why it's important that it is in an organization-wide goal. It's something that you want to endeavor, you know. And you want to lay out what the benefits are. Um, and so some of the main things that the business case should explore is now you want to go over and say, hey, this is how, you know, more, much more effective, you know, diverse and inclusive teams are. 
you know, and, and, and show the research, you know, that find that you can cite. <clears throat> you know, you also want to go into it and say, hey, you know, you know, people with disability, you know, it's like a billion people worldwide. It's not just small people, small percentage of people. I mean, it is a small percentage, but it's a, it, it can be a large, um, like you're missing out on a lot of exposure, you know, uh, depending on what, whatever your business model is, like what you're trying to distribute. And you also want to point out, like, it's not just for people who are disabled. Um, all the things that you can do for people that are hard of hearing um, also work for people who are in a sport bar. You know, when they're watching the TV, they can't really hear what the announcer is saying, you know, but closed captioning, they have it on, you can still understand what's going on. So there's a lot of innovation um, that is baked into thinking about accessibility, kind of like what makes you think outside the box. Um, and that innovation can really help drive um, things elsewhere. Uh, you also want to get into, like, all the, the costs that are involved if you don't address accessibility. You know, and either, like, the... The monetary cost, the time, like if something you don't think about it, plan ahead, it doesn't very end, it can be much more expensive. You know, and also uh, the legal aspects. Um, this probably isn't as, well, let me think. I was going to say it's not as big of a deal um, if you're working in the government because it's kind of like expected that, you know, 508 is the actual thing. Um, it's not necessarily something you'll need to convince your boss that it's important. Um, but Maybe, you know, well, if you are at a nonprofit and they're kind of on the fence, oh, is it, you know, is the legal really apply to us? And yes, it does. Um, so just pointing out those cases and why it's important. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, you can explain how important it is, you know, to being a good corporate citizen. You know, you want to take care of the people you work for, you want to take care of the community that you're in. Um, you want to take care of the, the, you know, the community, and you want to make sure that you emphasize how important accessibility is as a, a puzzle piece in that, you know, puzzle of being a good social corporate citizen. Um, you also don't want to neglect saying what the risks are. You know, um, in addition to saying what all the benefits are, you also do want to point out saying, hey, you know, do you remember, you know, last year when we launched X, when we really didn't think about accessibility, you know, and that blew up on our faces, you know, doing this kind of hard work up front, they're going to prevent that from happening in the future, you know. Um, so pointing out the risk can be very effective. Uh, and as far as details, um, the Web Accessibility Initiative, um, particularly in the past five, ten years, has done an excellent job writing up all sorts of good documentation. Um, anything on what the actual like, standards are, what are good things that you can do to like, you know, you're building a drop down menu. Here's a really good example. You know, you want to you know, make PDFs more um, accessible. You know, here's things to think about. Um, and they've also done, the, it's just go here, and I'm leaving this on the screen, you know, take a picture or whatever. This is a phenomenal resource. Um, and it goes in much more detail of what I just presented. Um, and very, very good information on like how to structure it, what different information, it gives you all of the, like the studies I mentioned, like inclusive and diverse teams are more effective, like it gives you some of those citations, um, it gives you a lot of the citations on, you know, what percentage of users are disabled and benefit from accessibility, um, so just absolutely phenomenal resource. Um, I highly recommend that you use it if you can. <coughs> so that is it. Are there any comments or questions? So you know it all, you're all ready to go, nobody's gonna get burnt out. Okay, well thank you all for coming.
Um, I will be around. Um, I think at the Form 1 booth, I just walk around the hall. If you have any questions, um, you want to get more detail, um, I can even give you more detail than like at Form 1, how we approached it. Uh, we had like an accessibility working group that spent like nine months like going through like building process maps on how everything works, um, all kinds of like serving the employees, what they thought was important or things to help, um, you know, putting that together, how we did structure things. Um, so, yeah, so I have, I have a lot of stuff that I can just off the cuff chat about. So if you do think of something later, uh, feel free to come up to me and just ask. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.